What else did he say? He said you were the best in the Parsec. What's up guys, it's your boy PJ the Paradox Nerd back again with another video and today I'll be doing unboxing and review of the Hot Toys TMS-011 Remnant Stormtrooper from the Mandalorian TV show. So I was really on the fence in picking up this Remnant Stormtrooper because I wasn't a fan of how the final production pictures turned out. In the pictures it looked like a lot of the weathering and paint job didn't look that good and I felt that this figure was rushed because he came out a couple months earlier than his original release date. Regardless of my doubts, I still decided to buy this figure because I'm a huge Mandalorian fan and I'm probably going to get everything from the Hot Toys Mandalorian line including this Doo Doo Trooper. <laughs> so here I am praying that this figure looks a lot better in hand than in the pictures that were shown to us. So yeah, let's unbox this bad boy and see how this figure turned out. But before I do so, I want to give the boys from Rogue One 6 a shout out. If you guys love high-end Star Wars collectibles such as Star Wars prop replicas, Hot Toys and statues, please check out their channel. Matt, Steve, and Chris do an awesome job with the wide variety of shows and content that is definitely worth checking out. All right, guys, enough of the plugs and small talk. Let's unbox this bad boy right now. All right, so let's check out the box art. And as you can see, it's just your basic Star Wars theme, black and gray packaging with a picture of the Remnant Stormtrooper here in the front. And here in the bottom, you see this band that goes almost all around the box with a picture of the Remnant Stormtrooper here in the bottom right. Here on the side, you have another picture of the Stormtrooper. Nothing on the other side and nothing really special here in the back of the box. All right, so let's open this bad boy up. And once you open it up, you have this cover slip with a picture of two Remnant Stormtroopers. And under the cover slip, you have the figure itself. All right, let's take this bad boy out. Okay, let's see this Remnant Stormtrooper. Okay, pretty decent amount of weathering. Got all like these like sand blotches around his armor. Got like scratches on his helmet. I mean, pretty decent weathering and paint work. I mean, it doesn't really blow me away, <laughs> but yeah, looking good so far. All right. Let's see what else you get with this Stormtrooper. You get his E-11 blaster. You get his SE-14R pistol. Pretty cool that they added this pistol with the figure. Uh, let's check out the base. Are you Sorry about that guys. I'm just really really shocked that they reused this Imperial Starfleet floor base for this figure considering that in the show the stormtroopers were nowhere near any Imperial Starfleet. So Yeah, I'm kind of frustrated with that, but it is what it is and uh, let's move on to What else you get with this figure? So you get a bunch of hands. Let's take a closer look at a pair of them. All right, as you can see, the weathering is pretty decent on the armor. All right, and uh, yeah, you get some more hands here. And I think that's about it. That's all the accessories that comes with this figure. But um, first impressions on this, uh, this Stormtrooper, I mean, it doesn't blow me away, uh, but I still think it's pretty cool looking. But uh, yeah, let's dive into the review of this figure right now.
All right, so let's start this review by going over the accessories that he comes with. Starting off with the base. And yeah, really disappointed with this base. Kind of wish that they gave us like a base plate cover that had the Mandalorian logo here in the front. That would have been so much cooler than this reused Imperial Starfleet floor base that they've used in many, many Star Wars figures in the past. Kind of getting sick and tired of it. But yeah, really disappointed with Hot Toys uh, with, this, uh, with this base. You also get a pair of gun holding hands. And as you can see, there's some good textures on the gloves. Pretty decent amount of weathering on the armor itself. A gesturing left hand and a pair of fisted hands. He also comes with an E11 blaster. As you can see, really good detail on the blaster itself. The only thing that's missing is the weathering. Not enough weathering on this blaster. If you really think about it, the Remnant Stormtrooper is weathered as hell and the gun isn't. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. But yeah, I do want to mention that there are some moving parts to this rifle, as you can see. But uh, overall, I think this turned out pretty good. And last but not least, he comes with an SE-14R blaster. All right, so the next thing I would like to take a closer look at is the articulation, starting off with the head. So the head is on a ball joint, so you have really good range of motion. As you can see, you could bring his head up, you could bring it down. You can turn it from side to side, do some tilts. So really good range of motion around the head or helmet area. Moving on to the shoulder joints, because of the shoulder armor, you have limited range of motion. You can only bring his arm out just about 60 to 70 degrees. You can bring it forward just about 90 degrees and bring it back just about 70 to 80 degrees. His bicep has some swivel to it, as you can see. And the elbow joints, you can only bend his elbow just about 90 degrees. Now moving on to the torso, unfortunately because of the armor, there is no articulation around this area. As for the hip joints, again, because of his armor, you have limited range of motion. You could only adduct his hip out just about 10 degrees. You could bring it forward just about maybe five to 10 degrees and bring it back maybe five degrees. Uh, his knee joint is double jointed, so you can bend it a little bit past 90 degrees. And last but not least, the ankle joint. So the ankle joint is on the ball joint, so you have really good range of motion around this area. You can bring his foot forward just about 30 to 40 degrees. You can bring it back just about 60 to 70 degrees. And he has some swivel around the ankle joints. And here is a closer look at the helmet design. And as you can see, this helmet design is not the same as the Return of the Jedi version, which is kind of weird because all the events that takes place on the Mandalorian show takes place after the Return of the Jedi movie. And uh, you would think that they would use the same helmet and armor design that was used on the Return of the Jedi on the Remnant Stormtroopers. But it is what it is. And uh, let's focus on the helmet here. And as you can see, the paint job and the weathering on this helmet is pretty decent. It's not the best. I think Hot Toys could have done a lot better. But yeah. I have a feeling that they rushed this figure out just to get something out. And they, uh, they kind of skipped out on the details in the, the paint job on this, uh, on this uh, figure. Because seriously guys, this is not their best work, as you can see. As we pan down the figure and check out the rest of his armor here, you can see that Hot Toys did a better job with the weathering on his chest and shoulder armor. But as for the battle damage on his armor, I don't know guys, it just doesn't look natural to me. I don't know, they just look like stickers on his, uh, on his armor. Seriously, it just doesn't look good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below about uh, some of the battle damage on his, uh, on his chest plate and in the rest of his armor. But yeah, I still think that Hot Toys could have done a lot better job with the, uh, the weathering and the bow damage. And here is the bottom half of the figure. And as you can see, the same detailed weathering and paint shot that was on the top half of the figure carries over all the way down to the bottom. And like I mentioned before, Hot Toys could have done a lot better job with detail and weathering on this, uh, on this Remnant Stormtrooper.
it's like once they were done manufacturing all the remnant stormtroopers they took all of them outside once it was done raining and uh, they just stomped on it put the figures back in their packages and shipped it out to us <laughs> and here i am reviewing one of them for you guys <laughs> So here are my final thoughts on the Remnant Stormtrooper. This is surprisingly not that bad of a figure and this figure actually grew on me the more I played with it. Yes, the paint job and weathering is subpar and yes, the articulation kind of sucks. But to be honest, when you have this figure displayed in your shelf, he actually looks pretty decent. I would definitely recommend this figure if you're a huge Mandalorian fan looking to pick up everything from the Hot Toys Mandalorian line or if you are a Stormtrooper collector. If you are not either one of those and you are just another Star Wars fan, then definitely recommend you skip out on this figure and pick up another Hot Toys figure instead. I just felt that Hot Toys definitely rushed the release of this figure and it shows with the final production piece. All right guys, so that wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed my unboxing and review video of the Remnant Stormtrooper. If you did, please hit that like button and comment down below letting me know what your thoughts are on this figure. Also, if you love Star Wars and Hot Toys, definitely consider subscribing because I put a lot of Star Wars and Hot Toys content on my channel. All right, guys, thanks for watching and always remember to do what you love, love what you collect. Take care, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.